As we record this the next expansion to the Elite Dangerous Universe Odyssey goes into public alpha testing in the next few days. In this video we're going to go through every major feature that we know about so far that is coming to Elite Dangerous Odyssey. If you enjoyed this video hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications as that stuff really helps the channel and if you'd like to help further support our work you'll also find us on Patreon. Links to everything you need are in the description below. So our first headliner then is the new planetary rendering technology that covers all landable planets even extending to the current landables for players who don't own Odyssey. The tech is designed to offer finer details up close as well as being much more realistic overall than that currently shown and, where appropriate, it incorporates the inclusion of multiple separate geological feature rich zones on a planet ...what the team refers to as geomes. Odyssey players will gain access to billions of new planetary surfaces that feature tenuous atmospheres as well as new organic lifeform POIs featuring new simple biological entities that are somewhat akin to plants. And the biological discovery and sampling will play into a new biologist elite rank coming to the game. Perhaps the biggest headliner for Odyssey is the inclusion of what the community calls space legs. The ability to finally leave the pilot seat and get out of your ship or SRV and walk about on a planet surface or inside a starport or installation. Where the local conditions such as gravity or temperature don't allow for movement or survivability you will be prevented from leaving your ship or SRV but bear in mind that you're on a planet in motion in a simulated star system so those temperature conditions can vary wildly between day and night for example. Get caught without a ship or SRV when the wrong sun comes up at the wrong time and well you could end up deep fried in your spacesuit. Talking of spacesuits, to help you survive outside your ship and SRV you'll now have access to three types of role specific spacesuit alongside the current in ship suit that we're used to seeing. Those suits are the Artemis which is geared towards exploration, the Dominator which is geared towards combat and the Maverick which is geared towards scavenging. The suits are complemented by a range of weapons, equipment and consumables that will allow you to further specifically tailor your characters functions and utility. The suits, their weapons and equipment can be upgraded in a similar fashion to the way engineers are used currently to upgrade ships and you can now own as many of the suits as you'd like and they can be equipped whilst in a ship or SRV as needed. We know that suits are fitted with a functioning flashlight and that a night vision system can be added as a modification somehow. I mentioned weapons. There are three distinct types that closely mirror what we're used to dealing with in ships. Those are Kinetic, Energy and Plasma. Kinetic weapons like machine guns and pistols are good for damaging suits, armour and the fleshier squishy bits enclosed within. Energy weapons like lasers are good for damaging the shields that the suits come equipped with and plasma weapons are good at damaging both but the outgoing rounds are slower moving so their use requires more skill or indeed less range to be effective. After all someone's not going to dodge your red hot glowing ball of plasma if you unload it directly into their eyeball. We also know that there are three types of grenade arriving with the new expansion. One is a traditional explosive grenade to inflict physical damage. Then there's an EMP grenade that primarily damages shields and then a slightly more unusual grenade that deploys a static energy shield around itself when thrown that players can use to shelter inside from incoming fire. There's a new starport based social hub and communal area where you can pick up missions, interact with NPCs and meet other players. At least some of these social hubs will have a real time view of the rest of the station interior where you'll see players ships arriving and departing and landing badly. A nice extra layer of pressure there in knowing that the whole bar in the space station is watching your cutter slide about while looking for the sweet spot where the landing clamps will engage. The starport social hubs contain a number of services and shops that help equip you and your newly discovered bipedal locomotion. Those services are 
Inter Astra which acts in the same capacity as the current shipyard system in stations allowing you to buy and equip ships. Pioneer Supplies This is essentially a shop where you'll buy all your suits, weapons and consumable items. Vista Genomics where you'll hand in your collected biological genetic data in a similar fashion to how explorers use interstellar cartographics currently. Patrons are politely encouraged to please wear gloves when delivering their gathered genetic material. Inside you'll also find Apex Interstellar which acts as a kind of space taxi service taking commanders who don't own a spaceship or don't want to use their spaceship somewhere that they want to go. And Frontline Solutions which is a service you can sign up to to become a kind of gun for hire mercenary in ground combat scenarios including what Frontier have described as large scale battles. All new on foot missions will be available for commanders to take on and as with the current game they'll range in nature from assassination and combat heavy missions to courier and stealth missions. The missions are often approachable in a number of different ways and it's down to commanders to decide what methodology to best use to complete a mission in a fashion that best suits their playstyle and the kit that they have available. To help complete the various tasks available commanders can use a variety of tools and equipment including the energy link which can transfer power in two modes siphon and overload. We've seen this device being used to overload a door mechanism forcing it to open and siphon mode can be used to transfer energy into a players suit battery system for use. The arc cutter delivers a powerful cutting beam that can be used to remove panels to gain access to a mechanisms internal workings. The profile analyzer a device capable of scanning an individual and cloning their access control credentials for use in more nefarious scenarios. The handheld genetic sampler how this device specifically works as of yet is unknown however we do know it's used in the gathering of genetic material from the new planetary organic sites. Alongside these handheld tools commanders also have access to a number of consumable items including a medical kit for topping up player health and a device known as an e-breach. An e-breach is a very expensive one and done illegal consumable item that allows players to hack, override or otherwise gain access to a computerised system or mechanism that they shouldn't really have access to. The new on foot missions will predominantly centre around permanent planetary settlements all of which have accessible building interiors and feature NPC civilians and guards. There are a number of different layouts to these planetary settlements but they will feature fairly clearly marked buildings with specific functionality applied to each building so you should have a fairly good idea where you're going when you get there. Whether you're allowed to go there or how the residents react to you will be driven by your own criminality, your personal standing with any given faction and the background simulations inherent conditions at the time you visit. The NPCs at settlement sites react to outside stimulus. For example they don't take kindly to finding a cut access panel on the floor but importantly they don't possess a hive mind. That's to say if one becomes alerted in an isolated part of a settlement they'll need to raise the alarm to tell the rest of the settlement that something is up giving you a valuable few seconds in which to let's call it persuade them otherwise. Elsewhere we also know that physical multi crew is now a thing come odyssey. You'll be able to let other commanders into your ship, fly them somewhere and drop them off and whilst in your ship if you allow it they'll be able to avail themselves of any SRVs and SLFs you own. Auto landing on planetary surfaces is about to be a thing we're presuming with the aid of the existing docking computer rather than a new module but either way Frontier have confirmed that if you so desire your ship will find a spot and land on a planetary surface for you. We know that there is some sort of melee attack available but there are no melee specific weapons and we know that Guardian and Thargoid ground installations will be accessible to on foot gameplay. 
Frontier Community Manager Bruce Garrido confirmed on the System Chat podcast this week that the upcoming alpha test will be what he called a quote ''staged'' unquote affair. That likely means that the alpha won't see Odyssey's full feature set available right from the start but similar to the games initial public beta test some 7 or 8 years ago now players will be slowly given access to more and more of these features as the test progresses. Arthur has previously mentioned that he believes the alpha test for Odyssey will be around 6 weeks long. How soon after that process ends Odyssey then launches we don't yet know. So that's it. The Odyssey Alpha launches on March the 29th and the face of Elite Dangerous will never be quite the same again. What bit about Odyssey has you most excited or what bit do you want to know more about? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video consider subscribing to the channel and take a look at one of our other videos which is linked on screen right now.